In the construction part, it was broken down into filming and editing, creating a radio poster and advertisements. To create this successfully, we used a variety of media technologies that I will comment on now. During the filming process, the hardware equipment we used for every time we filmed was a film camera, tripod, microphone and a stills camera which we carried with us when going to the places to film. These were the interview houses and Blackpool. Obviously we used the camera to film, adapting it onto the tripod to keep a steady shot. Using a tripod was a huge advantage because we knew we could get a steady, straight, successful shot. It also enabled us to use pan right, left, pan right and left, up and down shots, canter shot, low angle, high angle, a variety of shots that we had planned in our storyboard. The microphone was essential because it ensured we had clear and precise interviews with the sound. However, we did have a problem with the microphone as at some stages of the filming. An example of this problem was when we were filming our first interview in Blackpool. The interview was held in a small open fortune teller booth where anyone could access. This meant it allowed background noise and members of the public talking, which did affect the sound in the interview massively. However, we did overcome this by altering and experimenting with the audio when editing on Adobe Premiere, and this did improve slightly. However, I do not think it will be strong enough to be as successful as we planned. Another problem that occurred with the interview was during the tea leave one towards the end when our interviewee was discussing she repeatedly used her hand gestures which then touched the microphone by accident and it made an echoing noise however this isn't as noticeable as the rest of the interview the sound is very successful on this interview we use the software of the internet when filming to film a lap on a laptop of someone typing in the supernaturals in the keys as a close-up. We also filmed someone on the internet researching different pages to do the supernatural paranormal showing a variety of texts and images that would be relevant to our film. The shots we did this were a variety of angles, over shoulder shots, close-up, extra close-up and full shots. The particular software we used for this was the laptop, internet, Google and other various internet pages with useful information. We found these internet pages from our secondary and primary research. In the narration process of the documentary, we use the hardware of the radio room, asking the narrator to speak into a microphone. Microsoft Word was in order to read the, was the software we used to read the script off for our radio and documentary narration. I feel that the narration was very successful as it's very enthusiastic and fits well into the documentary. However, to improve on this, I felt we could have experimented with other people's voices, for example using middle-aged women who would be delighted to put on an animated voice. Yet, this was a problem in the first place and no one had the time or was interest or interested apart from the drama student we previously used. Go. In the editing process of editing our documentary, mostly software devices were used. The main software we used was the Adobe Premiere to organise, capture and edit our film. We began by capturing all of our filming we did in Adobe Premiere and then organised all the footage we used on a timeline where from there we could chronologically edit it in order. When editing, we split it up into different sections. For example, opening sequence and the part where we visited the fortune tellers and then focusing on the media. When we had sorted each section out, how we wanted it to be, i.e. edit the clips and cut them down, we began to work on transitions and editing effects so we could create the correct atmosphere. In our opening sequence, we wanted to use a film effect. Therefore, we were not unable to find it on Adobe Premiere. So by using the internet as a software, Google and YouTube, we researched different tutorials we could upload onto Adobe Premiere where we could get the right effect we wanted. However, once we did find the film effect, I don't think it made much of a difference or an atmosphere, so we decided to put our opening sequence in black and white as it gives an old authentic look and with the music creates a spooky eerie atmosphere, quite ancient when re relates to the theme of the background of supernatural and fortune telling. Examples of the most popular transitions we used was crossfade, black and white and dip to black. We felt these edits and transitions were effective and simple and we didn't want anything too extreme and abstract because it would not have made the correct atmosphere. For example, using a diagonal crossfade it would have looked tacky and jeep. 
speeding up and slowing down most of our shots weren't really effective for us in some places. We reversed the speed of the shot as it looked unusual and obscure. We found the speeding up shots in necessary place to save time and it was similar to elliptical editing. A suitable place where we used the speeding up technique to be similar to elliptical editing was where we filmed for half an hour outside the Fortune Telebooth wanting to investigate how many people would stop, look interested or walk in. Obviously we had to cut it down and speed up this shot and look really effective getting the shot in about 5 seconds. It also creates a lively atmosphere especially with the music behind it when it was fitted in. An example of using a reverse shot was the shot of a candle being blown out. This shot was close up. A bird's eye view is very slow and created an airy atmosphere when putting it into our film. We experimented with a reverse speed shot on this candle shot and it looked really weird and ghostly, however, it ghostly. And it fitted well into the theme of supernatural fortune telling, therefore we continued to use it. Other ways we used Adobe, Pre Adobe Premiere to edit was for graphics and text on our film for the subtitles for the interviews. The text we used for the main title, The Fortune and Fortune Telling, was a standard Times New Roman, however it looked quite authentic. We put this text so we could stand out against the, well against our background. For, su for the subtitles of the interviews, we again used the same text that we put on subtitles in white to introduce who we were interviewing and a brief line similar to an occupation. An example of this for one of our interviews was a local teenager who believed she was having paranormal experiences. The subtitles we used was Lucy Bate, a local teenager. Another source of software we used the internet. This was mostly used for researching tutorials for different editing effects. However, mostly for downloading music to transfer onto Adobe Premiere to use in our film. We researched a variety of different music into our go in our film and found two that we thought would be relevant and most effective in our documentary. These two sounds we found were very similar, however one was quite upbeat and the other slow and we thought the slow one could work effectively in the opening sequence. When we did put the first music on, we found our opening sequence, it fitted well and fitted in sync, however we did have to do a few ad adaptations to it. The second music source we used for the documentary was really successful because it gave a light-hearted view amongst the documentary, however still creating this eerie effect. For the construction and editing of the advertisement poster we used a mixture of hardware and software. We used the camera to take images of the tarot cards we had planned in the research and planning stage and got a variety of different images. After uploading them onto the computer we used the software Photoshop to edit and create a successful advertisement poster representing our documentary. We combined them with the internet with Photoshop, also uploading images of Channel 4 logos which was necess necessity in our poster. I feel that our poster for our documentary is very strong and represents the documentary well. It's eye-catching and involves all the codes and intentions needed for the poster advertisement. It does this very well. For the editing and construction process of the radio advert, we used software and hardware techniques. At first we used ha hardware as we had to record the narration of the radio advert through the camera of the microphone. I felt because we already had done the narration for our film, it was much easier to set up and I felt the narrator felt much more comfortable. Therefore, the narration for our ed radio advert is very strong. It is animated and interesting, creating the correct atmosphere we needed. We then captured this onto the software Adobe Premiere where we inputted the narration. Then from planning we used some music and clip of our film and combined them together to create a music bed which created an informative, interesting radio advert. I feel overall we have been more successful with the radio advert and poster as yes we can fall us on the documentary the lack of talking heads and box pops. However the radio advert and poster represents the our documentary in the fullest that it can. I feel our audience will be interested in our documentary from the radio, ad radio advert and the poster advertisement we have created as they are really suitable for our target audience as very eye-catching, easily representing our documentary.